turn around our lives. Thank you for taking us up and down the highways and the byways. Thank you for bringing some of us through the airways and some of us by railway. But, 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 but it is because of your grace and your mercy that we're able this morning to sit together, that we're able this morning to worship together. And God, we thank you now for all of your goodness. Because somebody went to bed last night and didn't wake up this morning. But we come to tell you thank you. Thank you for the air that we breathe. Thank you for every step that we make. Thank you, God. And now, Lord, we ask that you would be with us. So that it would be none of me. And all of thee, have thine own way in the name of Jesus. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 On tomorrow, if it be the Lord's will, we will celebrate the Declaration of Independence, which we call the 4th of July. The most quoted line from the Declaration of Independence is we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The writers were declaring That they not only deserve freedom, but that they were willing to continue to fight for freedom. My brothers and my sisters this morning, I would that you would hear me well. It is well understood. that there is a right-wing group of people that are determined to take away our freedom. And overturn the will of the majority of people. The end of abortion rights is only part of a greater agenda. From our freedom to vote 
and pick leaders who represent us to our freedom to decide for ourselves whether and when we will have children to our children's freedom to learn the truth of our history to our freedom not to be destroyed by gun violence they want to take away our freedom and rule by only a few wealthy people. Yet still, on tomorrow, we are supposed to be celebrating freedom. But our government should not be relied upon to protect our freedom. On July the 30th in 1956, President Dwight Eisenhower signed a law declaring in God we trust as the motto of the United States. If you got any money, you'll see it. Well, not yet. Amen. Well, in 2022, This is a motto on paper and not in practice. It's written, but it's not being practiced. And as this country celebrates the 4th of July on tomorrow, there is one thing that has not changed. And that's the Bible. The Bible has not changed. It's the word of God. It's the written word of God. And it has not changed. God has declared that we should not take nothing from it. And we should not add anything to it. The word has not changed. And so instead of putting your trust in this country, instead of putting your trust in this government, there's a word from the Lord that comes from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. By way of the English Standard Version. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. He, he will make your path straight. And so just for a little while, I'm going to talk about acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. One of the biggest downfalls of this country and the people that live in this country is the failure to call on God. The failure to call God for directions. We, we get our directions 
from politicians, talk show hosts, books from mentors. And sometimes God uses them for directions. But before we consult them, we must first consult God. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And the word declares that he will direct your pathway. If you need directions, acknowledge him. What does it mean to trust God? To be persuaded that his word is your guide. That he's willing and able to give you advice when you need it. To trust him means to look to him for direction. And where can we put our trust except in God? Can we put it in wealth and health? Because both of them could be here today and gone tomorrow. You can be healthy right now and in the next minute. There could be a health failure. You can be wealthy right now, and then the next minute, a disaster can wipe out everything you got. Where can we put our trust? Except in God. Can we put it in the favor of the world? Entitlement? And we need to take voting seriously. Voting is not just for senior people. Voting, voting is for all people that qualify. And if you're not careful, the wrong people get in the right place. Your parents, your grandparents, and your elderly friends will be without a pension. Be without health care. They call what we've worked for all of our life entitlement. It is entitlement. We are entitled to it. We work for it. Who can we depend on? Who can we put our trust in? Our friends. They love us. They mean well. But they go away and leave us. Can we put it in riches and power? Because it is God who promotes and it is God who demotes. Can we put it in our own abilities? I don't know about anybody else, but every Sunday when I stand here before you, I feel so insufficient. I cannot stand before you every Sunday in my own strength. Who can we put our trust in? The fortune tellers? Lady Lou and Sister Do and Die? Or can we put our trust in hard work? We can't even get to work if we don't move by the power of God. If God doesn't wake us up in the morning, we, there is no hard work. There is nothing that we can reasonably put our trust in except God. Well, how, how do we put our trust into practice? 
first of all, we must know what God has promised and what we may expect from him. No absolute and unconditional promises of material blessings are made to us. No blessings that are absolute and without condition. No, no blessing, no, no blessing, no blessing. Absolute and without condition. And we won't know what conditions, we won't know what to expect if we don't get into our Bibles more than we do. It's not enough just to come here on Sunday morning. Because if you leave with a question, you're going to leave with a question. But if you join us on Bible study, you can ask a question. We need to be more concerned about what thus saith the Lord. The only promise that we have is that we'll promise contentment and peace of mind. Now, now it's up to you if you want to worry about it. But if you keep your mind stayed on Jesus, the Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace. Trust must be connected to obedience. You can't have one without the other. Obedience means doing the things that are pleasing to God. And you will not know what's pleasing to God unless you trust God and read his word. Those who cannot serve God cannot put any trust in him. Trust in God simply means reliance upon God. And it should be accompanied by petitions for blessings. We have not because we ask not. God knows what we need before we ask, but he wants us to ask. Asking is the polite thing to do. You, you don't come to my house and then open my refrigerator door. No, you ask. If you want something, the proper way to receive it is to ask for it. Trust and confidence in God is acceptable because it implies that we love God, that we love God. If you love him today, give him your greatest trust. This means without doubt, undivided, wholehearted trust. Trust in the Lord, the all-wise, the all-loving, the all-knowing, the all-holy, and the almighty God. In First Chronicles, in First Chronicles 28 and 9, David gives Solomon some fatherly advice. And you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and every thought. God knows what you're thinking about me right now. God knows somebody saying, I wish he would stop. God, God knows that. But if you seek him, he will be found by you. 
But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. And America is forsaking God. You don't have to be a part of that crew. But they are forsaking God. There are too many of them that are supposed to be our leaders that are thinking that they're bigger than the law. That the law doesn't apply to them. But if you keep forsaking God, the results will be destructive. Notice what he said to Solomon. Serve the God of your father. We have gone away from our homegrown teachings. We have deleted the practices of our forefathers, our parents. On Sunday, you would find them in church. And not just them in church, but the family would be in church. And the family is leaking because we have gone away from the practices of our parents. We've gone away and we are suffering because we've gone away from the practices of our parents. Don't you think that every gangbanger out there that's drive-by shooting was always on the corner? Some of those were in Sunday school. Some of those were serving on the youth usher board. Some of those were serving in the youth choir. Some of them might have been junior deacons, but they were in the church. But we've gone away from our parental teaching. Listen, the desire to be independent of God leads to dependence on the world. The desire to be independent of God. The desire to have your freedom. For nobody to tell you what to do. The desire to not be guided. The, God, the desire to not be led. To be independent. Leads to dependence on the world. True freedom for mankind. True independence consists in a faithful acceptance of the rule of God. True independence, again, true freedom is accepting the rule of God. In God we trust. We need an inward emancipation. An inward Emancipation from the bondage of the world. We are so stuck on the world that we have forgotten our morals. We, we are so stuck on the world until we've laid down our righteousness. And we want to be like the world. But God put the church in the world to change the world. Not to let the world change the church. Illustration. In the book of Luke 15, the prodigal son, and you might find it somewhere around 12 or 15 verse, the prodigal son. Left his father's house. He asked his dad, said, give me my portion of the inheritance. I, I, in other words, what he was saying is that 
give me mine because I want to be free. I want to go out and I want to be free. He was wanting to be free and wanting to be independent. And so the Bible says he went to a far country. And people are going to a far country every day. Anytime you leave the church, you're going to a far country. He went to a far country. And he spent all of his inheritance. And when he lost all of his inheritance, because he wanted independence from his father, he became dependent upon man. And you know what man did for him? When he spent it all, he partied and he danced and he bowed, he bought all of those designer clothes and everything. And when he spent it all, they told him to go to the field and feed the hogs. They sent him to the field to feed the hog. Trying to live independent of God means exchanging serving God for something worse. Exchanging serving God for something worse. I know about it because I was a prodigal son myself. I left the church. And when I got caught up with the swine, I decided that it had to be something better than this. Like the prodigal son, many have left the church to feed swine. The swine of alcohol, the swine of drugs, the swine of addiction, the swine of gang banging, the swine of bankruptcy, the swine of prison. That's what's out there in the far country. The text, the text gives us something destructive to avoid. The text gives us something that we should avoid like a plague. Avoid it like it's poison. It gives us something. And that something is lean not on your own understanding. Leaning on our own understanding is a common it's common in many departments of life. It's common in politics. It's common in business. And it's common even in the church. In the old church, they wouldn't do nothing unless they prayed about it. And that, leaning on our own understanding, can be destructive. History reveals it. That when we lean on our own understanding, we get in trouble. Individual experiences reveal it. And churches have been split apart, reveals it. We sometimes pray for God's guidance. But we want God to guide us in the way we want to go. Trusting in the Lord does not mean that we may not use our own understanding or form our own plans in pursuing our goals. The proper use of understanding uh, does not mean leaning on it. But uh, while we're using understanding, uh, we must depend on God and lean on God if we expect to be successful. Why uh, trust in his promises and uh, trust in his word and trust in God's ability to overrule circumstances. Uh, what a mighty mm -hmm, God we serve. 
And uh, I stopped by to tell you uh -huh, that the Supreme Court, yes, uh, is not the last stop. Yes, uh, God uh -huh, has the last word. Yes, uh, depending on God uh -huh, for strength to make it. Yes, uh, does not prevent us. Yes, uh, for using our own mind. Yes, remember God. Yes, is the final director, yes, of all the events of life, yeah, and his thoughts, yeah, are not our thoughts, uh, his ways, uh, are not our ways, uh, ain't got a right, uh, our understanding, uh -huh, is not strong enough, yeah, to lean on, yes, that keyboard, uh, over there, uh, is not strong enough, yeah, to lean on. Uh, it's good for playing, uh -huh, but not for leaning on. Uh, if I lean on it, uh -huh, I might fall uh, and can't get up. Uh, ain't got all right. Uh, ain't it all right? Uh, I will understand him. Uh -huh, is useful, uh -huh, but our best understanding uh, is not strong enough uh -huh, to get us through. Uh, I stop by uh -huh, to tell everybody uh, sometimes uh -huh, bitter experiences uh, uh, we cause us to learn. Uh, we learn uh, through bitter experiences uh, that our understanding. Uh -huh, is not strong enough. Uh -huh. Some relations uh -huh, that we thought uh -huh, were medicine yes, uh, turned out to be poison. Uh -huh. And some thoughts uh -huh, that the grass uh, was green on the other side. Uh -huh. But when we got there, uh -huh, it was full of weeds. Uh -huh. Our understanding uh -huh, is not strong enough. Uh -huh. Finally, uh -huh. In all your ways, uh, acknowledge him. Uh, what does it mean, Pastor, uh, to acknowledge him? Uh, it means uh, to pray for instruction. Uh, it means uh, to consult the Bible uh, for direction. Uh, it means uh, to turn uh, from your way uh, and turn uh, to his way. Uh, yes, uh, let me give you uh, a little something uh -huh, to take with you. Uh, in all your ways, uh, there may be sorrows, uh, but acknowledge him. Uh, acknowledge his authority. Uh, acknowledge his power. Uh, acknowledge uh, that he can do uh, what he wants to do. Uh, in all your ways, uh, there will be disappointment, uh, but thank him uh, for the problems. Uh, if we never had a problem, uh, we would never know uh, that God uh, could solve them. Uh, if you never uh, had a trouble, uh, you will never know uh, that God uh, can reach way down uh, and pick you up in all your ways. There will be ways of joy. Praise him for the joy. Because this joy that we have, the world isn't given. And the world can't take it away. Acknowledge his faithfulness. Acknowledge his goodness to you. And acknowledge him as king of kings and as lords of lords. And acknowledge him as the savior of the world who bled and died on a hill called Calvary. Who suffered for your sins and my sins. He died to take the curse off of us. An early Sunday morning early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand and so I say to you to acknowledge him because he's worthy to be acknowledged